Alright, okay, so welcome back. <laughs> welcome to the continuation of our pre-recorded lecture on our topic, which is your blood examination for parasites, alright? And before we continue the to the capillary um, blood uh, source, this um, mini pore, uh, dearest, no, before I forget, um, the blood cells and proteins um, found in your specimen will stick to the filter, okay? But through repetitive um, aspirating of uh, saline and all that, the blood and the proteins there will be uh, removed, tama. Okay, so yeah, the blood and um, protein, blood cells and other proteins sticking to the um, uh, to the filter will be removed through re repetitive washing, okay, using saline because there's a tube that um, collects that, okay? Alright, tapos, um, members of the microfilari are, 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 again, this is used for microfilari, but there are species that cannot be recovered. That is uh, the Manzonella um, ozardi and Manzonella perstans because of their small size. They are small size perstans. Okay, because of their uh, small size. Um, and because of that, because of their small size, um, we use now membrane filters that have greater pores, greater um, a smaller pore size. Tama. Yeah, smaller pores, smaller pores. So, uh, smaller pore size. So that these um, microfilarial species can still be recovered. Okay? But again, disadvantage is expensive to use, um, but it's the most sensitive method. Okay? Alright, so that's just additional information in your membrane filtration method. Okay, now we go now to the second source of our blood, which is your finger prick blood sample. And we start first with the preparation of your wet or fresh preparation. Now, um, ah, sorry. <laughs> The major um, advantage of this um, is that your microfilarii and your trypanosomes, your flagellates in your blood, your hemoflagellates, your tri trypanosomes, they can be seen motile, they can be seen moving, and they're also large, okay? So, in the wet preparation. So, that, so, that's, so that's why their presence can be easily detected because they're motile, so they're really moving, okay? <laughs> All right. And... Uh, Again, the disadvantage, species identification is not possible. But if you want to look at it, look, look at its motility, or if you want to confirm, or you want to look if there's really parasites, then um, uh, through the wet or fresh prep, um, you can see that, okay? Especially the motility. That's the great advantage of that, is that you can see its motility, all right? So your example of your uh, motile parasites, so these are your microfilaria, diba? As you can see, bitok yun siya, no? <laughs> it's really a worm. Uh, in wet preparation, so it's unstained and it and it's yeah it's moving supposed to be. All right, but this is a picture, diba? So, wala siya move, of course. And this is your trypanosomes, as you can see. Um, this is your so bang sections na ko. This is the cover photo. Cover photo, FB. <laughs> the cover photo of your section in so yes. These are your trypanosomes. These are flagellates, okay, found in the blood. All right. So again, we'll discuss more of that in the. Second, uh, second PowerPoint presentation, the parasites in our blood smears, all right? So wet or fresh prep by the name itself. So from the, uh, you put one drop of blood, and then you put a cover slip, and then you examine under the microscope now. Ayan. So I think that's, our, that's the method of wet or fresh prep. Or you, in, you also add one drop of saline uh, para dili lang siya, dili mo lang isang RBCs. All right, okay, that's the wet or fresh prep. Main advantage or great, uh, the major, ad this major advantage is you can see the parasites movement or they are in they are really motile okay the next method is using capillary tube and the first one uh, your capillary tube method now for capillary tube method again we use a heparinized tube so once i color a band once i color a band it's a capillary tube sana na remember pa it's color red basta na heparin it's a heparinized uh, which is sealed again on one end and then we centrifuge and of course um through centrifugation there will be four layers huh? <laughs> four layers lang. So, uh, if you were you were under me, if you were my students in MT14 HIS, I hope na remember ni. Okay, um, we have four layers uh, um, centrifuge, uh, micro hematocrit tube. Once they are centrifuge, it starts with the fatty layer, pinakauna, but it's usually not visible. And then you have the plasma, the buffy coat, and then lastly the packed RBCs. Okay, all right. So of course, yeah. So there are fatty layer, although it's not um, seen most of the time. Then you have the plasma, the buffy coat, which contains your red blood cells and white blood cells. Um, uh, white blood cells and platelets, sorry. And the red blood cells, your packed red blood cells. And the last one is your clay or your sealant, okay? 
Um, but most of your books, they will also they will they will tell you that there are three layers lang, starting with plasma, buffy coat, and RBCs. But in my review, it was emphasized that there's another fatty layer. There's the upper layer, which is the fatty layer. I forgot what reference um, Mamlea got it uh, during my review, but there is a fatty layer. So four layers, guys. All right? Okay. And fifth layer is the clay, if you want to include that. Okay, but this is the main layers. Again, fatty layer ang nasa taas, pinakauna. All right. Okay. Ayan. And um, the microfilari and trypanosomes are usually examined here at the Buffy coat um, because they reside usually in your uh, white blood cells or because of their large size then, the right? So uh, your microfilari, they concentrate here at the Buffy coat. And um, for the methods, you can first make your Buffy coat films, okay? So you make smears from the Buffy coat. And then the second one is what we call the quantitative Buffy coat or QBC. Okay. All right. Now we go now to your uh, Buffy coat films by the name itself. For Buffy coat films, your Buffy coat films, the capillary tube after centrifugation, you break it, okay, at the area of the Buffy coat. So it's quite um, listen to perform actually. <laughs> it's very technical and very sensitive then in uh, pag perform. Okay, what if uh, pag break ni mo mapilang Buffy coat, tiba so wala ka ng specimen so. It needs practice then, it needs experience. So you broke it at the area, or you break it at the area of the white cell layer after centrifugation, and then what you do, the buffy coat is then spread and then stained. Um, you spread it on a slide and then you stain using gemsa or right stain. And then, of course, um, we look for usually Leishmania donovani. Leishmania donovani is um, a flagellate, pa rin, okay? Um, and you also look for trypanosomes and histoplasma capsulatum, which is a yeast, okay, ayan. So histoplasma capsulatum now, why do we also look for that? It's because histoplasma capsulatum can resemble your Leishmania donovani, oh, diba? So it's not coccidioides imitis. Recall in our first exam, diba? Coccidioides imitis, no. It's histoplasma capsulatum. This is a yeast, dimorphic yeast pa rin, parehas ni coccidioides imitis. But the downside lang is it can also uh, mimic or it can also be... Um, mistaken as your Leishmania dunovani, okay? Uh, Leish, uh, histoplasma capsulatum, it causes your spelunker's disease. Ayan. So, nasa ano to? Nasa exam. Spelunker's disease, di ba? So, because usually, you get this from bats. Mga bats. Bat droppings, okay? Sa mga cave, mga ganun. Spelunker, when say spelunker, kato na mga magwatong cave, di ba? Mag-hiking sa cave, inside caves. And inside caves are a lot of ba uh, bats, di ba? And histoplasma capsulatum, you can get the spores of your um, histoplasma capsulatum from bat droppings, as in bat, panike, bat. Okay, alright, ayan. But again, that's the downside. Leishmania donovani, or histoplasma capsulatum, can be mistaken as Leishmania donovani. So we can also look for that in your um, your uh, Buffy coat films. Okay, alright. Um, yeah, okay, alright, ayan. Tapos, um, L. Donovani, um, the nuclear, nuclear material is dark red purple and the cytoplasm is light blue. So, there's really like parang um, the, there's a parang an oval um, structure that contains um, a nuclear material which is red, the dark red, purple, and then the cytoplasm which is blue. Whereas for H. capsulatum, it's just parang a large dot, large dot of nuclear material. So, red lang. Ayan. Tapos may clear halo. Yeah, it looks bad, but anyway, <laughs> and so that's the difference um, of your H. capsulatum and your Leishmani donovani. But it's actually quite challenging, diba? as, as mentioned. There, there needs, uh, it really needs much experience to really identify your blood parasites. Okay, all right, that's for Buffy coat films. Usually, we use that to determine again your Leishmania, your trypanosomes, and also histoplasma capsulatum because they they reside or they. Sorry, they inhabit your mononuclear cells, large mononuclear cells, or your white blood cells. Okay, so here's an example of your Buffy coat film results. You have Leishmania donovani there, the one that is pointed. Ayan, so as you can see, um, they are inside, intracellular. Intracellular, uh, they are inside your macrophages, your white blood cells. So you have there the kinetoplast, and kasi parang oval. This is the nucleus, tapos may mga... Ano pa, parang ganun. Okay, so again, more of this will be discussed in our um, discussion <laughs> on the parasites and blood smears. So, so that's Leishmania, Donovani. And the next is your histoplasma uh, capsulatum. Ayan, this one. 
So, uh, histoplasma capsulatum inside your WBC. So, it's much bigger, no, in a way, parang. And then, you also have, um, it's actually quite, that's why, diba, you can see the parang similarity nila. Alright, so they're intracellular. Um, and, but again, as you can see, mas large, mas dark ang center, okay, or the nucleus or the nuclear material of your um, histoplasma capsulatum compared to your um, Leishmania, okay? All right, and again, to difference to differentiate also, look at the presenting um, uh, symptoms, no, or disease of your patient. Okay, all right, again, so that's for Buffy coat films. Okay, the next procedure is what we call your quantitative uh, Buffy coat. Now, for quantitative Buffy coat, your capillary tube there, uh, it's already pre-coated with acridine orange, ayan, and potassium oxalate. And inside also, we in, we insert what we call a cylindrical float, para siyang plastic or float inside your um, capillary tube that we insert so that the layers of your Buffy coat will be enlarged. Okay, so you really, you really can see the layers. Okay, all right. Now, what is the use of the acridine orange? Um, after centrifugation, we then examine it under ultraviolet microscope or fluorescent microscope because the acridine orange will then um, be taken up by the DNA of your parasites. And acridine orange is a fluorescent stain. It will emit light once light is um, um, uh, once that the stain is excited by light. Okay, so it will emit light in the form of fluorescence. Okay, so it will emit um, para an orange fluorescence. Okay, so. Since the parasite takes up the acridine orange stain, so when you examine it under the microscope, the parasite will then emit light, so you can see it under the microscope. Ayan. So uh, that's acridine orange. So it causes fluorescence among the non-fluorescing RBCs and other um, blood uh, components. Uh, useful again, demonstration of malaria, microfilaria, your trypanosomes, and also babesia. Babesia and plasmodium, or your malarial parasites, they are the same. They are sporozoans. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So again, useful demonstration of malaria, microfilaria, and uh, trypanosomes and babesia. So this is your procedure. So you draw blood, seal the tube, and then you add float. So as you can see, the float is para a plastic material again, para uh, yes like that. You insert it in the tube itself. Sorry guys, I'm not even And again, what? Is the function of the float it enlarges the layers of your buffy coat so platelets lymphocytes granulocytes you can really see the layers of your ano na, buffy coat like this layer platelets lahat this layer granulocytes all of that granulocytes and then the rest lymphocytes whatever okay all right again and then um this again capillary tube is pre-coated already with your acridine orange stain and potassium oxalate okay all right now here's an example of a picture Ayan. So this is your after centrifugation. The float now there is partial plastic, okay, inside the tube, and it now enlarges the layers. So you can see the layer of platelets. You can see lymphocytes, um, granulocytes. So the whole tube there, guys, is what you examine under the under the ultraviolet microscope. Okay, you don't need to prepare slides now. You don't need to prepare smears out of it. The whole tube uh, you then examine. You you then examine. Uh, in, under the fluorescent or ultraviolet microscope, okay? And then you focus on the float ba or whatever, depending on the parasites, okay? And, and here's an example of your, um, um, the result, acridine orange. So that's uh, plasmodium vivax gametocyte. And as you can see, diba, characteristic banana-shaped gametocyte of plasmodium falciparum. So if you see a fluorescing uh, material, um, when you examine it under your ultraviolet microscope, then that could be the parasite, okay? All right, but again, it needs practice, it takes practice. I mean, like, how can I know that that's plasmodium gametocyte, uh, plasmodium virvax? Because it's very, <laughs> yes, para lang siyang, I know, circle. But for plasmodium fossil, parang, diba, ayan, elongated, banana shape, crescent shape, diba, so easy na. All right, now, why, why do you say it's quantitative? Because aside from parasites also, dears, you can also use it to quantitate, no, uh, the different uh, numbers of your WBCs, platelets, in hematological disorders like um, leukemia, polycythemia, and, and whatever. So you can quantitate, okay? You can look at the numbers of your WBCs, your platelets, ba, lymphocytes, granulocytes, etc. Uh, to, um, again, determine uh, your um, the state or the condition of your patient. Uh, what hematological disease? So disease in the blood, ba, blood disorder. Okay, not only for parasites, blood parasites, but also blood disorders. That's why it's also called quantitative, Buffy Coat, because you can count 
okay, the levels, the concentration, the um, numbers of your platelets, lymphocytes, granulocytes, uh, red blood cells also, for usually in the purpose of diagnosing mga hematological, hematological disorders, okay, or mga disorders of the blood that doesn't concern your parasites, okay, that's why it's called quantitative uh, fecal. Alright, okay, so that's for quantitative buffet code. As you can see, fluorescing, okay, parang orange, ang color, or yellow. Alright, okay. Now, we go to your stained smears, ayan, which is what we're after, what we are, what we're going to perform in the lab, and <laughs> uh, what we are really, um, what our aim, di ba? Our aim in routine lab, the performance, or the preparation of our stained smears. Now, for stained smears, um, again, it consists of both thick and thin. And once you request, or once you receive a request in the laboratory of a uh, uh, request for thick and thin films, it's always, always the stat request. Ayan, bahalag kinsa panagikan, bahalag um, kinsa panag order ana. Once you receive that, it's always a stat request. Why? Because, um, especially for malaria and other blood parasites, but mostly malaria, it can be deadly if you don't um, diagnose malaria as early as possible. Example, plasmodium falciparum, 18 hours lang. Within 18 hours, if wala pa na diagnose or it has not yet been detected, hemolysis will now start. Okay, so your RBCs of the patients will then lyse, so it can really lead to death if it's not diagnosed early as possible. That's why it's always a stat request for thick and thin blood films. The request for thick and thin blood films and examination is always a stat request. Ha? Please take note. So if mo interns mo later, puhoy, and especially and eventually be practicing med techs or doctors magani mo in the future. Always take note that when you receive and when you request also examination for blood films, it's always always a stat request. So drop everything now. Meet me in the pouring video. <laughs> drop everything what you're doing. <laughs> drop everything that you're doing and then collect the blood, make smears, and then examine. Because that's a stat request. Okay. So meaning stat, the right? stat, statin, which means immediately. It does not mean as soon as possible. It means immediately. Lumabasa board. So what is the meaning of stat? Statin, the right? It means immediately. Immediately good. Dili siya as soon as possible. Ha? Please take note. Stat, immediately. Okay, lumabas na boards, di ba? As basic as that. Alright, okay. Tapos, of course, since we have staining, we can use a lot of stain. And the first one is your GEMSA. GEMSA stain is considered to be, again, the stain of choice because it provides your optimal, the most optimum detail of your uh, parasite morphology. Um, and these are the expected color nila. Okay, for Leishmania, red, cytoplasm, blue. Okay, Schaffner's dots, which are... Um, a characteristic or part of the structures of your malaria, malarial parasites. Uh, red, uh, filari cannot be stained, okay? Your nuclei, blue to purple, sheath, this is in the microfilari para siyang covering sa tail, alright? Or covering sa imuhang uh, microfilari, ang imuhang sheath. Um, it's clear, may not stain. Background material, red blood cells, pale red, white blood cells, purple. Neutrophilic granules, pink to pur pink purple, eosinophilic granules, purple, red. Okay, so that's the expected results under GEMSA stain. Again, a stain of choice for parasites. But aside from GEMSA, you can also use your right stain. Um, the advantage lang is the preparation already contains alcohol, or so you don't need any more separate fixation. So the right stain itself already contains uh, ma fixative. And this is expected results. RBCs light red. Okay, so compared to GEMSA, pale ang GEMSA, but for rights, kay light red siya. WBCs bright blue, eosinophilic granules bright red, and neutrophilic granules pink. Ayan, right stain. Usually, right stain also is the stain na ginagamit for peripheral blood smears, no? For for hema, for hematology, right stain. Okay, alright. Ayan, and the last stain is the Delafield's hematoxylin stain. This is usually used for the visualization of the sheath or the covering again of your micro filaria or your filarial worms. Delafield's hematoxylin. Okay, and it uses, uh, the thick films are dehemoglobinized, meaning the RBCs muna are lysed, uh, gi-remove ang hemoglobin, uh, using 2% formalin and 1% acetic acid. And the main stain is a mixture of your hematoxylin, hematoxylin, and ammonium alum, which enhances your nuclear detail and morphological features. But again, Delafield's hematoxylin usually is used for the visualization of your um, <laughs> visualization of your uh, microfilarial sheath or covering of your microfilarial worms. Okay. Alright, so here's an example of your results using the different stains. This is your GEMSA. As you can see, this is your RBCs. They're quite pale, diba. And inside, this is now your parasite. Okay, parasite. 
uh, I think that's plus mode yun pa rin, the parasite inside, right? So it's pale. Uh, compared to your right stain, your right stain is already, um, the Darwin's is now have much color, but it's still light, lighter red. Okay, it's not really that dark, light red. Okay, and lastly for Delafield's hematoxylin, as you can see, this is now the sheath. Ayan. So as you can see, it's like covering. Okay, so it's well stained, so you can see uh, the sheath of the microfilarial worms. Because um, later, again, we'll discuss in our presentation on um, the different parasites in blood smears. This is one of the defining features or morphological feature that we use for identifying your microfilarial worms. Okay, we look at the sheath. Okay, if it's really um, sheathed <laughs> or it's not, does it have a sheath or wala? Okay, it's part of that in the identification of your microfilarial worms. Okay, all right, yeah. So those are the different staining results using Gemsa, right, and your Delafield Semitoxylin. Now, press the buzzer. Stain of choice, your Gemsa. Okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, thank you. So for the next video, alright, hopefully next video, <laughs> medyo marami tayong chikahin kasi, alright. So we'll now start with the thick and thin film, starting first with your thick films and smears, like an introduction first and then how do we perform it. Alright, and then followed with thin films, thin smears, and then our lab procedure on how we perform, and then um, eventually the malarial count and etc. Alright, so again, I'll see you in the next video, starting with the thick films and thick smears. Thick films or your thick smears. Okay, alright.